Hey, welcome to the Radiologic Technologist YouTube channel. I have a blog also where I have over 200 articles about the awesome field of radiography and all the other modalities that are in diagnostic imaging. This is just a quick video. I got another email. It's always just easier for me to, to blab on uh, about uh, email responses than it is to sit down and type it out. I'm trying to, I should probably focus on one screen here. There's the email. So I got an email from Iman uh, asking, hey, Ron, I had a few questions as an incumbent radiologic tech student. Thanks for your time. Here it goes. Number one, how difficult or feasible is it to get a work visa overseas as a radiologic tech with an American education certification? So that is a great question, and it's very difficult to answer. I have found over the years that it's very uh, difficult to figure that out because um, every country has different rules and regulations. I mean, even here in America, um, different states have different requirements, right? Some states require licensure, some don't require any licensure. Uh, and so the, my first thought here, um, if I can find it, um, I'm on my Facebook group, the Radiologic Technologist Facebook group. Um, and I thought, I, I've seen this conversation before. You should head, head over to Facebook. And if you don't like Facebook, I'm sorry, I don't either. But it's really a great platform to be able to share ideas. And so that's where we're at for now until something better comes along. But if you go to the Radiologic Technologist group and join, um, you'll see that there are thousands upon thousands of questions being answered there every day. So when I do a search just for overseas, because that's what pops into my mind about working overseas, um, I see one, two, three, uh, uh, three questions right here. Um, this person said, if I wanted to find work overseas like Ireland or Finland, uh, is that possible? And how would I go about doing that? And then somebody else said, um, I was just laid off in my marketing graphic design job and I would like to go into x-ray um, and doing it overseas. And then let's see. Uh, so just another one about how can I go overseas? Um, it's You're going to have to call the health science department or whatever it's called in the country that you're interested in and see what they accept. Um, I do know that we can go with our ART license or American education, as you put it, and get into different places, but I, I would hate to try and quote you from memory. I wanna say we can, we can do some work in England and Australia and maybe some other places, but I just can't quite remember. And, and, and the, the other thing to do, if I hop over to my blog at theradiologictechnologist.com, and there's a search bar in the top right corner. Uh, if I can use that and go, and I just don't know what my keyword would be. I know we've talked about that and tried to lay out how to get into other countries. Um, I'm just looking through the posts. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm just not going to be able to succinctly answer that because there are so many uh, different rules and regulations. I mean, some countries it's doctors performing imaging like ultrasounds and stuff like that. So, so I'm sorry, I'm not a great uh, so f fountain of information on that one. I would say the way you go about that is to pick your destination and then get on the Facebook groups, uh, get in these YouTube channels. Reddit has a radiology subreddit that I, that I frequent quite often get into these places where rad techs are talking and ask how to get into the country that you're interested in. And I'm pretty sure you would find your answer that way. Your second question, what is the burnout rate? How are you holding up after a career in the field? Well, I, let's see if I can put a number on it. I know a lot of techs with a lot of injuries. Um, and it depends on the modality. And we've kind of had this discussion in some other uh, videos. Um, X-ray has a lot of uh, back injuries because we're, we're pushing and, and pulling and 
Uh, you know, we boost patients up in bed when they start to slide down in their gurney and, and we pull them out, uh, out of, uh, well, that's CT and, and gantries and things like that. But, but for x-ray, it seems like there's a lot of back injuries from improper ergonomics. You know, you're not lifting with your, with your legs, you're, you're bending over and picking things up. You should always bend at the knees and kind of do a squat lift. Uh, but they teach you all that in school. Now, when you get into advanced modalities, you, you have other issues. Uh, ultrasound, for example, where you're, where, you, you know, if this is your probe in ultrasound, I don't know if you can see that with my background, you pinch an ultrasound probe and you apply it uh, against a body part and you have to twist it and angle it and, and sometimes move it around to the other side of the body. So as you can imagine, having to scan a left kidney on a patient who's supine means you've got to reach way on the other side and you're really straining that shoulder. And then you're also straining a lot of muscles and tendons and ligaments there in the wrist by, by not only pinching, but, but twisting and rotating and, and everything you have to do to get a good ultrasound image. So that being said, ultrasound techs, in fact, when I was in school, I remember the first couple of weeks, they told us you have about a five-year work life expectancy because of all the stress on your body. So you have to really do a lot of stretches. They have bands and, you know, I used to get my employees ergonomic posters for the back of the door that shows how to stretch out everything and, and do your warm ups before your shift and all that kind of stuff. MRI, it's a lot of back from pulling and putting people on the, on the, uh, the table. Um, nuke med, you know, kind of the same thing. Uh, IR standing on your feet all day, uh, which is the same as a cath lab. You're on your feet all day or x-ray techs in the OR. You're on your feet all day. I've got a couple articles on good shoes that uh, through surveys and polls and getting everybody's input, I kind of give like the top 10 uh, that everybody's wearing. I'm a, a big Hoka fan myself. They're kind of goofy looking, but the pads, you, you can see it in a review that I did. Uh, the Brooks Ghost versus the Hokas. Um, by far the softest things I've ever worn. So, and then you mentioned burnout. I've got an entire, I actually give conference talks on burnout in radiology because uh, it's very prevalent and it has been for a long time. And so if you go to my blog and you, uh, you do a search on burnout, in that little search box, burnout, hit enter, it should take you to the article that I wrote. Uh, it's pretty hefty where I give 13 different um, causes of burnout, uh, inadequate personnel or staffing, unusually high patient volumes, unhealthy tech lifestyles, ambiguity within the job, lack of proper training, um, a vulnerable environment, your own personality traits, inappropriate equipment, ineffective leadership, mental health trauma, ergonomics, um, profitability, driving the workflow in your department, and then trying to be a jack of all trades and covering everything. For each one of those burnouts, I list, uh, I list the causes, but then I list two suggestions on how you can start to stop and reverse the burnout. And those suggestions are a mixture of things that, that technologists have come up with and suggestions that administrators or administrators can employ to help prevent burnout uh, for the employees. And then at the end of the article, I actually list how you can tell if you're getting burned out and, and uh, some self-care methods. And then when it's time just to quit, because sometimes you just end up at a job where management doesn't care and they, they'll work you to the, till the, till, to the bone. And uh, there's ways to identify that. And sometimes you just have to cut your losses and go somewhere else. So um, when it comes to burnout, check out that article and give it a good look. And then uh, lastly, you said, would you recommend radiography over nursing? Again, I have, uh, I have some videos and articles over that, but the gist of it is um, those are both excellent career choices and there's pros and cons to both. But in a nutshell, what I'll tell you is for me personally, of course, this is all my opinion, right? But for me personally, I, I wasn't looking to spend a lot of time with every patient. Like nurses, for the most part, have the same patient their entire shift. If you're in the ICU or, or telemetry or the medical floor, everywhere except the emergency room, nurses are with the same handful of patients. 
for their entire shift. And sometimes several shifts in a row, if they're working, you know, three days in a row, they'll get that same patient because it, it makes more sense to put a nurse on a patient they already know than it is to give a nurse a brand new patient that they have to get familiar with, right? For continuity of care, you want to get the same nurse on the same patient. Um, but in radiography, you only have your patient for five or 10 minutes. So my whole, my whole outlook on going into radiography or, or the field of radiology was to solve problems. I liked solving problems and it, and it tied in with helping people. So when people come into the hospital with a pain, the doctor sees them in the ER and then the doctor orders one of two things or both. He orders a radiology exam and lab work. And, and I used to work in the lab, so I understand how the lab work, uh, works and what the tests do and what they're for. And then through imaging, we can also be a part of that diagnostic puzzle, uh, a piece in the puzzle to help solve it. So when it comes to, you know, do I recommend radiography over nursing? The pay can be pretty similar. Um, starting out an x-ray, you might start out a little bit lower than nursing does. But x-ray, when you go through the ranks of CT and ultrasound, MRI, IR, mammography, all that stuff, uh, you can get into the, four, it depends on where you live too. But on average, you know, in the 40s, $50 an hour, unless you're, you know, California or New York or Florida or somewhere like that, it's much, much higher, but so is the cost of living. So you got to take that into account. But um, nursing, uh, I mean, I look at career advancement too, right? Nursing you can go into nurse practitioner or nurse anesthetist, but generally you're, you're, you get into nursing and you're a nurse and you can move around to different departments within the hospital or a doctor's clinic or an outpatient clinic or whatever. But uh, when it comes to career advancement and being able to learn something different, um, there's not a lot of different ways to go in nursing. Now, uh, nurse anesthetists uh, are great careers and they make a lot of money. And so and nurse practitioners can have their own practice right, where, where a PA, a physician assistant can't, they have to work for a doctor. A nurse practitioner can, can hang their own shingle, they used to say, meaning open their own store, open their own clinic. Um, so you're always gonna need nurses, but you're always gonna need x-ray techs and you're always gonna need CAT scan techs and you're always gonna need MRI techs. So when it comes to need, you need more nurses because nurses are on every floor X-ray techs are just on one floor, one unit, but you're always going to have to have X-ray because a hospital cannot function without it. Uh, you take out imaging out of a hospital and I'm not quite sure the hospital could function without it. Where, uh, you not to be brash, but you take the nurses out, the doctors can do what the nurses do, honestly. Doctors can't do what X-ray does. Doctors can't do what MRI does. Doctors can't do an, ultra, an ultrasound like a sonographer can. Now, a doctor can take a, a butterfly, eye butterfly, and attach it to his iPhone now and, and do five fast, uh, fast, what do they call them, fast exams, like uh, uh, looking for retroperitoneal fluid or, or, or cardiomegaly or, uh, you know, some real simple things, but they can't do what a two-year trained sonographer can do. Um, and that's, that's, that's kind of where I've been on the whole philosophy is you, you can't run a hospital without your, your radiology department. You can, if all your nurses go on strike, your doctors are going to be pissed, but CNAs can kind of step up, LPNs can step up, and doctors can kind of manage. If the radiology department goes on strike, there's nobody that's going to step in and cover what radiology does. Nobody, not even the radiologists can do what the technologists can do. Now, now you may have some that might be able to fiddle around with an ultrasound machine, but I can you ask a radiologist to shoot a, a rib series or a mandible, or uh, do, do uh, uh, CTA uh, on the chest or something, uh, it's not happening. Um, at least I've never seen one that can. So um, what I recommend radiography over nursing, I would because I want to change patients fairly frequently and, and see new problems and, and solve new problems. And not it's not so much about following a doctor's orders on a patient all day right? Nurses give care to a patient. The doctor says what to do, and the, nur the nurse, for the most part, follows that plan of care. An x-ray tech gets a brand new patient, a, a piece of paper, or the computer says this patient has a cough, there's a chest ray or ordered, you do the chest x-ray. 
set them up, do it, send them back, and you're on to the next patient. So you're, you're, you're kind of a part of a process to help solve the problem. You're not necessarily providing prescribed care. I hope that makes sense. You, you can't really go wrong with either nursing or radiology, but I like the variety that radiology gives you. There's just so many different, I mean, you can work in a hospital, a doctor's office, you can go mobile, work for a mobile company, check out my podcast. I got a couple podcasts that I've done. One of them is where I interview the mobile x-ray tech who works in Hollywood. So she gets to drive a van around in LA and uh, x-ray uh, celebrities. And now she couldn't talk about names and things like that because of HIPAA, but she still had some really funny stories and it's an exciting career for her. Um, and, and so you can do mobile x-ray. Um, you can even go into veterinary radiography. You can do some forensic radiology work. Uh, you can even work with archeologists and, and do uh, mummies and sarcophaguses and all that kind of stuff. Lo lots and lots of different things you can do in, in the world of radiology. So um, Iman, I hope this has helped you out. If you have any more questions, you've obviously figured out how to contact me. Uh, if it's been helpful to anybody watching, please hit the like button, subscribe for me, and uh, you guys have a great day.